Hi everyone, good afternoon. How are you? I hope you enjoyed the conference so far. Um, I will be talking during this short talk about Jetpack Compose. Who's a Android developer right now? Wow, <laughs> a room packed with Android developers. Congrats. Um, who have uh, tried Jetpack Compose? Okay, cool. Uh, kind of everyone. It's, um, yeah, it's. Uh, very trendy right now, and I received a notification uh, just an hour ago. Um, JetBrains did a video one hour ago, and this is the first thing I will look at after the conference. <laughs> um, all right. Um, welcome. My name is Thomas. I work at BAM. You can meet some of the, the staff here uh, at the conference. Uh, I'm a Kotlin developer. I'm half a developer, half a manager. And um, yeah, uh, previously I uh, used to write application in uh, React Native. Oh my god, he's doing React Native. Um, but what I really enjoyed uh, when I was uh, coding in React Native is the declarative way of building a UI. Uh, whoever wrote React Native apps? Yay! Five people. Flutter? Flutter? Yeah, Alex. Great. Um, well, um, yeah, so now I want to use uh, Jetpack Compose uh, everywhere. And the, w one of the things I love about building UI is building animations. Um, because it's what makes a product great, actually. And when I started to use Jetpack Compose a few, a few months ago, uh, in production, um, I tried some part to um, redo some famous animations such as stories on Instagram, on Twitter, and, and, and such things. I tried exotic things such as um, SVG, path morphing, um, and yeah, I ended up with a big composable that no one <laughs> can reuse, actually. <laughs> and so I missed the theory. How should I be building animation in a clean way, in a reusable way? Because here at BAM, we are building applications for our clients. So when you say uh, at clients, uh, can we spend some time to build an animation, please? Well, uh, he's not very interested right now. <laughs> Who's in, in, in this situation? Yeah? Yeah, some people. Um, so we have the chance to work with designers. And, uh, and Theo and Remy taught me a lessons, a lesson uh, some, uh, some weeks ago, some, some months ago. Um, the theory behind an animation. What we call an animation, actually, um, this author, Dan Safer, called it a micro-interaction. In his book, he said that it's, a different, it's, it's the difference between a so-so product and a great product. The worst thing is for a user to be uh, on a paywall, click checkout, and nothing. And you wait 10 seconds, and hopefully it's your internet connection. It was a bit slow, but OK, it works. So you need a feedback. Actually, in the physical world, you touch things, you hear sounds, you know it's working. You have a keyboard, you press thing, it's okay. But if you have a UI that does not uh, uh, respond, um, well, you can lose your user. So uh, um, the theory of Dan is that uh, um, an animation is composed by four different things, a trigger, some rules, a feedback, and sometimes loops. A trigger can be a touch, scroll, swipe, navigation. Uh, things a bit exotic like shakes, uh, speak, walking, I don't know, whatever you want, actually. Uh, rules, these are the, the business rules. When does this animation should be uh, running? Um, it can depends on, on, on your business, on the time, on the location, on the states. The feedback is actually the, 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 the graphics itself, uh, how things are moving, transforming, morphing. Uh, it can be sound, it can be haptic. Um, 
now you can find an, um, some application with celebration screen, with twinkles and things, and with a haptic, it's just a little haptic. It can change the whole um, feeling of your animation from a user point of view. And the loop and mods, um, I'm going into details later because I think you need an example right now. Um, so I'm going to show you uh, an example. I'll, I'll be using this example for the, um, for the talk. Um, yeah, so this, on this screen, you can see the title, right, with little twinkles. I don't know if, it's, if you can see at the, at the last row, um, the little yellow sparkling stars. Wow, that's so beautiful. Um, a little animated checkbox. Um, when I press it, there's a, the, the check mark actually uh, disappear, fade, fade out. Well, goes out, goes in. And when I press, there's this little scale effect. Can you see it? Yeah. Does does someone can see it? Okay. <laughs> um, and the thing is, if we split uh, this micro interaction into four parts, we've got. The trigger is me pressing uh, the checkbox. Um, the feedback is the check mark. Okay. Um, the loop, or I don't know if you can see, it, but there's also the little stars on the checkbox uh, when it's checked, actually. And the rules, they are quite simple. It's a simple example, but when I press, it toggles on. <laughs> when I press again, it toggles off. Um, but we could imagine a world where we can disable uh, the checkbox on some, based on some rules. If we split this in four parts, we can reuse parts of this animation elsewhere. The trigger, I was pressing the, the check mark. I can press all the item. I can reuse the code of, 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 uh, of just my touch. I reuse the code of the stars on the title. And this is what I want to show you um, in this, uh, in this uh, talk. So we can organize those four things in different ways. There's no uh, standard, I think. Um, we can just think about a reusable, composable as a trigger. We wrap the feedback itself and, um, and rules and loops or some states that enables the graphics. Uh, we can uh, optimize things such as only the, the, the graphic parts uh, re-renders, recompose. Sometimes the loop itself is a, is a composable. Um, for example, the stars, uh, it's, not, it's, it's a separate composable. Uh, we can also um, do things in reverse and wrap the feedback inside the loop. Uh, actually, the thing is, uh, what I learned uh, doing animation is uh, if we find those four parts, we're good, uh, no matter which order we, we put in, in place. Um, so, yeah, um, we're gonna, I'm going to um, reveal the codes little by little so you can have an example with the code. Um, and first, I will uh, run um, the preview on, on my on my um, phone. Um, so th the first thing I will reveal is the checkbox feedback itself. So right now it's 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 empty. It, it's it shows nothing. Um, I think it's a bad name <laughs> actually. We'll play a little game. Think of a correct name, and uh, at the end of the conference, uh, come and uh, and uh, and I don't know. Uh, give me some hints to improve this. Um, so the first part of um, of uh, of this micro interactions is the the graphic itself. It's a Lotte animation. Um, I highly recommend the Lotte. I, I, I'm sure you all know how what is Lotte. It's um, animation. Uh, you can uh, create it on a lot of tools, um, Adobe tools. Uh, as well, and it's a JSON you put in a row uh, resource solder, folder, and then you just import it with um, with an API. Um, you can control the progress with an animated something as state uh, API. So the thing is, progress is just 
an animated value based on, on, his, on his checked. All right, um, um, I'm teaching nothing here. It's, che it's, it's checked, it's true. So the value animates um, with a speed of, uh, yeah, because uh, it was too slow, so I put twice the speed. And if it's checked, it's false, it goes in reverse. Um, so the LT animation is wrapped inside a surface with a, a little um, a, a little elevation for the shadow, and it's <coughs> wrapped into the box. I don't know if there's a better way to do this. Uh, it, the box itself does nothing but protect the shadow, because if you don't wrap a shadow in a, with some padding, it just crops the shadow. So uh, the padding of of four is simply to uh, protect the shadow. Um, so I'm going I'm to show you what does this called uh, renders. Why does he don't, does he don't check the design tab? Because Lottie animation actually they, they don't render on the design tab. I don't know why. If uh, someone knows how to, I'm really interested. Um, so, so yeah, uh, this is what we got. Hey, I won't take this call. This is an idea. Hop. So you won't send me any pictures, or I don't know, <laughs> uh, during my talk. Um, so yeah, we got the graphics. Hooray! Um, second part, and, um, the, the, the click handler itself. So um, as you noticed, the checkbox feedback is really atomic. We know the dependency. There's only one is the a check boolean value. And um, there's nothing else. The click handler as well. It's not checkbox specific. It's called click handler. I can reuse it uh, elsewhere, actually. And it takes as a dependency a content which will receive uh, a flow of units of clicks. So we can spam clicks, clicks, clicks. Um, so the clicks are um, a hot flow. Um, um, coroutine and uh, the express is an internal state that we'll use with inside uh, detect tab gestures. So yeah, you could say, why the hell is he doing all this? He could just use a modifier and press, etc. Et but it's not so much uh, asshole to redo this thing, uh, to have more control about what we want, uh, because in my Micro interaction. I want the scale effect, and uh, I think it's uh, it's a good way to isolate things. So how detect tab just work? Um, it's a coroutine, and and you try to await the release. And if the user cancel the press because he moves his fingers away, it will return false. If instead the press is released on the on the urea, it's written two. So you know when it's a real click or not. And if it's a real click, uh, we just emit a, 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 a unit value on the, on the flow. And thanks to this, I can compute an animated value uh, uh, scale um, one true, uh, 0.9, one false, 100, 100%. And use a simple modifier um, scale, and pass in the content. Um, as you can see, uh, I'm sure you're aware of it, but a good thing is to to put a modifier in the first uh, argument of your composable functions because it's it's really cool to just modify something and not having to because in my in my preview I I, I use a modifier on the, on the checkbox for you to see. So I'm going to re rerun it again. Um, and I don't need to pass additional arguments. Uh, things that I did uh, in React Native, actually, and I think Flutter is quite the same. So um, one point for Jetpack Compose. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and finally, so yeah, I can show you. All right, because I don't use. 
I was not using um, my click and learn. So this is my click and learn. And uh, these are the basic rules. I receive the clicks, I scan the flow, I just toggle the states. All right? Um, and this row is just to pass the contents uh, side by side with the checkbox. So I can, in my preview, use a little text, cut and colors 21, and it renders side by side. I just comment the stars because now they're doing nothing. All right. Actually, this screen was designed by one of our designers. He was so happy I put it, bring it to life. <laughs> yeah, so this is the scale effects. And so now to bring uh, more shine to, to this uh, microinjection, we can finally use a loop effect, the stars. Uh, once again, it, the name has nothing to do with the checkbox. It's called stars. I can reuse it elsewhere. And um, the only dependency is are they enabled or not. And the stars are actually the same thing as the, um, as the check mark uh, draw before. It's a composition that I import from uh, a JSON provided by Loti. I just customize the colors, so it looks great. And the progress, the computed value uh, from, the, from my dependency, which is enabled. Um, pass a, pass a, a, a content. I protect the content with some padding so the animation can, the, the stars, they can um, occupy uh, more space around what I wrap. All right, so imagine there's some space around my checkbox, and the stars are going to occupy all this space. And once <coughs> I protected my content, I will just wrap it in a box with an additional layer. And for the layer to know which size to occupy, we need the modifier match parent size. Very useful. Uh, at the end of the day, uh, we we have our complete animation running. Wait a second. Yeah. Um, so key takeaways, key takeaways are uh, doing micro interaction is fun in our business at BAM and for I think every business who build uh, apps for external clients. Um, it's always a matter of budget. If we do it correctly, actually, we can reuse uh, what we uh, invest in elsewhere in the application. Um, so it's a good thing to start well bidding microinjection. Actually, it's really transforming the brand, the product, and the user will be very, very satisfied. Uh, you can um, follow me on, on Twitter and um, and yeah, the, the code I showed you is on uh, my GitHub pages. Uh, thank you very much. <laughs> we got some time for questions, and uh, you can meet after if you have uh, more questions. Yeah. No, they are not. Uh, so the question is, uh, does the animation I used are specific to Jetpack Compose, or you can use it elsewhere? So I'm going to show you what is the, um, the resource I use. It's not. It's um, you can give it to iOS developers for them to implement in their own app, or web developers. So REST folder. So it looks like this. It's Coordinates, layers, colors, um, shrinked, <laughs> and not human readable. Um, Loti has an extraordinary uh, layout editor, so you can import, and you can uh, change the colors. So if if I was about to 
say, ah, oh, damn, I, I would like to use those stars, but they are yellow, and I cannot uh, have the yellow colors in my brand. No worries, you can change the colors. It's very, very cool. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate your, your break. After the break, uh, Philippe Babich uh, will talk about Jetpack Compose again in a more advanced way. So um, I hope you will enjoy his talk as well. Thank you.